Assalamualaikum and good day. This video contains few subsection in chapter 2. First, we will discuss about types of constraints, then extreme points, followed by type of feasible regions, and finally, we discuss about a diet problem. Okay, let's discuss section 2.3.1, binding and non-binding constraints. Once the optimal solution to an LP has been found, it is useful to classify each constraint as being a binding constraint or a non-binding constraint. A constraint is binding if the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the constraints are equal when the optimal values of the decision variables are substituted into the constraint. Whereas, a non-binding constraint is a constraint when the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the constraint are unequal when the optimal values of the decision variables are substituted into the constraint. Let's consider Kinderwood problem. When we substitute the optimal solution of the problem where x1 is 20 and x2 is 60, we found that the left-hand side of the first constraint is equal to the right-hand side of the constraint. Same goes to constraint 2. When we substitute x1 to uh, 20 and the value of x2 is 60 into the constraint, we found that the constraint is equal to 80, which is same as the value in the right hand side but for constraint 3 we know that x1 is 20 and this value is not equal to 40 value of the right hand side of this constraint is 40 20 is not equal to 40 therefore the first and the second constraint are binding constraints while the third one is not a binding constraint. Note that the optimal point is where the lines C1 represent the first constraint and C2, which is the second constraint, intersect. Now, can you determine which is the binding and non-binding constraints from color world problem? Section 2.3.2 Extreme points and the optimal solution. Extreme points are sometimes called corner points, are the vertices or corners of the feasible region. An optimal solution to an LP problem can be found at an extreme point. Then, when looking for the optimal solution, you have to consider only the extreme points of the feasible region. For the Kinderwood problem, we see that the extreme points of the feasible region are simply points 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The optimal solution must lie somewhere on the boundary of the feasible region. The largest z value must be assumed at one of the vertices or extreme points. Okay, we know that the uh, coordinate of the first extreme point, extreme point is 0, 0. Let's substitute x1 and x2 equals to 0 into the z function. Okay, we found, we can see that z is equal to 0. For the second extreme point where the coordinate is 40, 0, Z is equal to 120. The third extreme point gives Z equals to 160. We obtain Z 
equal to 180 and Z equals to 160 from the 4th and 5th extreme points respectively. This shows that point 2060 is the optimal point since it gives the maximum Z. Now, determine the extreme points for the color world problem, then find the optimal solution from the points. Section 2.3.3 The Kinderwood and color world problems each had a unique optimal solution. However, some of LP problems do not have unique optimal solutions. Feasible region for a two-variable LP problem can be non-existent, a single point, a line, a polygon, or an unbounded area. Any LP can fall in one of four categories. The first one is the LP has no feasible solution. This is when a linear program is over-constrained and no point satisfies all the constraints. Therefore, the problem is said to be infeasible. The second type is the LP has a unique solution. The third Category is some LP may have a multiple or alternative optimal solutions. In the graphical method, if the objective function line is parallel to a boundary constraint in the direction of optimization, there are alternate optimal solutions with all points on this line segment being optimal. The last category is the LP is unbounded. There are points in the feasible region with arbitrarily large Z values in a maximum problem. The objective function can be increased without bound. Therefore, a feasible region may be unbounded and yet there may optimal solutions. Let's solve example 2.4 graphically. Okay, we have an objective function z equals to 2x1 plus 6x2 with two constraints 4x1 plus 3x2 less than or equal to 12 and 2x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 8. With the sign restriction, all variables are non-negative. Okay, this is the first constraint. And this is the second constraint. Then when we shade the area, there are no points that satisfy both constraints. Hence, this problem has no feasible region and no optimal solution. In example 2.5, we need to find the optimal solution using the graphical method. This is the LP model. The first constraint, the second constraint, and the third constraint. This is the feasible region. Okay. We label the vertices or extreme points of the region. Then we draw the objective function by choosing z equals to 6. Then we move the line parallelly upward. We find that the last point in the feasible region to intersect an isoprofit line is the entire line segment CD. This means that any point on the line segment CD is optimal. It clearly shows that 
point C, the coordinate is 4, 3. And point D, with coordinate 2, 6, are the optimal solution to this problem. The third solution can be obtained from the midpoint of the line segment. If an alternative optimum occurs, then the decision maker can use a secondary criterion to choose between optimal solutions. Now let's move to example 2.6. We draw the first constraint, then the second constraint, and solving this LP problem give us an unbounded region. This is the profit line and we should move this line upward and we can see that the objective function line can be moved parallel to itself without bound so that z can be increased infinitely. We can say that an unbounded optimal solution should not occur in a correctly formulated LP. Now we move to the last section in this chapter. 2.4 A Diet Problem A diet problem arises from situations in which a decision maker wants to minimize the cost of meeting a set of requirements. Here we have Fazura's diet problem where she requires that all the food she eats come from the four basic food groups. At present, the following four foods are available for consumption. Plain rice, fried chicken, salad and lime juice. A plate of rice costs one ringgit. A piece of fried chicken costs three ringgit. A bowl of salad costs one ringgit fifty cent and a glass of lime juice costs ninety cent. Each day, Fazura must ingest at least 500 calories, 60 grams of carbohydrates, 10 grams of sugar, and 8 grams of fats. The nutritional content per unit of each food is shown in Table 1. We need to help her to formulate an LP model that can be used to satisfy her daily nutritional requirements at minimum cost. So this is table 1. As always, we begin by determining the decisions that must be made by Fazura. We need to know how much of each type of food should be eaten daily. Thus, we define the decision variables. X1 is the number of plates of rice eaten daily. X2 will be the number of pieces of chicken eaten daily. X3 is the number of bowl of salad. And X4 is the number of glass of lime juice. The objective is to minimize the cost of Fazura's diet. Thus, the objective function is Z equals to X1 plus 3X2 plus 1.5X3 plus 0.9X4. The decision variables must satisfy the following four constraints. The first constraint is daily calories intake at least 500 calories. Okay, from table 1, we know that 
400 calories come from plain rice, 500 calories from a piece of chicken, 200 calories from a salad, a bowl of salad, and 150 calories from a glass of lime juice. And she need to make sure the total of calories must must, must more than 500 calories. Okay, therefore, the constraint is 400x1 plus 500x2 plus 200x3 plus 150x4 greater than or equal to 500. Now, the second constraint is she need to make sure that daily carbohydrate intake at least 60 grams. From this table, we know that the information in the second column give us the about the carbohydrate of each food. Therefore, the function of the second constraint is 35x1 plus 12x2 plus 8x3 greater than or equal to 60. Okay, the third constraint is about the sugar intake. She must take at least 10 grams per day. The function of this constraint is 2x1 plus 4x2 plus 2x3 plus 4x4 greater than or equal to 10. And the last constraint is the daily fat intake and it must be at least 8 grams. The constraint is 2x1 plus 5x2 plus 4x3 plus x4 greater than or equal to 8. Now, by combining the objective function and all these constraints together with the sun restriction, we have this complete diet problem model. However, we can't solve this problem by using the graphical method since this problem involves more than two variables. We can solve this problem by using the simplex method. That's all for now. Thank you.